Hello everyone and welcome back to another exciting Florida Aviation Network presentation coming to you live and in the clear the 50th annual Sun and Fun International Expo and Fly-In coming to you live from the Central Florida Aerospace Academy CFAA if you're into acronyms if you're not get into aviation you will be into acronyms we're we're here to enjoy the, the spirit and the, 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 the challenge of aviation. Mm -hmm. And you see everything on the ramp here from, from Cessna 150, 152s, all the way up to F-35s out on the ramp doing their thing. And if you haven't been here to an air show uh, recently, you need to get back here. Because it's, it's particularly today, the storm front went through mm -hmm. yesterday, cleansed everything very, very well. But uh, we're here, we're alive, we're kicking, and uh, we're learning an awful lot. Because coming to you from a school environment, in a learning environment, there's really, is there anything else about uh, the world that we live in other than learning? And a gentleman we have here on the set to talk to today knows everything there is to know about learning, at least from the Polk County standpoint. <laughs> Good morning, Ben. How are you? Fred, it's, it's a pleasure to have you here. Fred Hyde, with, uh, he is the big guy. We call him the superintendent for uh, Polk County Public Schools. And Fred, uh, we used to be able to call you the new superintendent. <laughs> You're not the new guy anymore. No, sir. I don't have that excuse anymore, right? So, I'm not but, the new guy. But I tell you, I was here it's the first time that we had Fred here, and he, uh, he did agree to a, an interview, mm -hmm. and it was getting about you know, 30 minutes before, at, where's Fred? And about <laughs> 15 minutes, Obi's starting to freckle up and he's uh, flaking and, uh, where's Fred? We, 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 where, where's Fred? And uh, finally, uh, it, we're a few minutes late, yes. but here comes Fred and he's, he's sweating and tugging and uh, traffic. The traffic in uh, yes. getting here was the problem. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and he, this was, the first time I guess the sheriff's department of we could fly you in in a helicopter if it's a that's awesome that, <laughs> that is awesome <laughs> being interrupted by a jet yes, passing over that's great but Fred you were uh, you were nervous and it, mm -hmm. you didn't realize that you you've got a lot of pull in this county <laughs> when they offered to fly you in a helicopter well not like they offered to fly me in um, so I did get stuck in traffic. You know, you hear when, you, when you're new, you hear about CFAA and you learn about CFAA. And they tell you how busy it is and how popular it is. And you don't really experience that until you actually pull up here. Um, you know, as you mentioned, the breadth and depth of the different types of different um, opportunities that are here, not only at the school, but, you know, the variety of aircraft that we have here, um, the variety of you know, not just aircraft from military to to personal use, but you know, there's all the new, you know, type exploratory. Hello. Okay. That's that's a little disconcerting. <laughs> that seemed close, um, but that first year I did. I got stuck in traffic. I literally did not move for more than 15 minutes, and I called the sheriff's office, my liaison to the sheriff's office, and she asked, "Where are you?" And I said, "Well, here's where I'm at." And she says, "Well, we'll come get you." Um, I said, no, ma'am. I said, I'll be there in a little bit. I'm just running late. And she said, well, pull up on the sidewalk and drive. And I said, no, ma'am. <laughs> I said, because everybody has a cell phone and somebody's going to say, here goes the superintendent thinking he can break all the rules. Um, but I got here. And so this year, I got here an hour early. So just to make sure. And traffic was completely, you know, there was no traffic pulling in. So I know that that's been a, an area of focus over the years. And clearly it paid off this year. So thank you. Well, no, Gene Conrad's responsible for that. He, he has really smoothed things out here. Right. But, uh, but it is, uh, I, I'm just really excited because I could tell that you had a vision of where you wanted this thing to go, even back from your first year. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is, I think, your third yes, sir. here on this show. I think you've done it. I, I think you were able to pull it off. We talked a little bit about the, 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 the size. I don't, and you mentioned that you really weren't prepared for the size, but you had enough foundation in place. You're making it work. Correct. And you've expanded this campus. Yeah, very excited. You know, as we talked about last year, there were plans for us to expand this campus to have an east and west option. 
Um, I, I presented that concept to the board, showed them the demographic data for the students attending here. Largely students that can attend here, meaning their geographic location or proximity to school made it convenient for them. But students from Fro Frostproof, Fort Meade, Davenport, Haines City, Ridge, Community High School area, those students really, by and large, were excluded because the travel time. Mm -hmm. It's not that they didn't want to participate, but the commute time for them was, quite honestly, um, unattainable. Mm -hmm. And so we created an East Campus on the Winter Haven Airport, and that opened at or above capacity right away. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited to share that we're in conversations now, planning conversations, about possibly creating a similar academic environment on that facility, on that airport location as we've done here. It is just a program is flourishing. It's definitely feeding into the industry, feeding into the military. So all of our post-secondary opportunities are there. And you know, and alongside that, we now have the air traffic control program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very excited to be launching that at Travis, our, our, our trades college. And um, great opportunity for our kids, great earning potential. And what's interesting about that program is the first two years will largely focus on uh, military mm -hmm. and commercial people who are leaving the industry, who are retiring, mm -hmm. and want to transition into a new role, into a new job, and we're gonna be able to support that. So I'm excited about that, because we're supporting our veterans, we're supporting others, and maintaining that focus on the industry. Well, Fred, the, and it's the, it, I think with a good solid foundation, you, anything that you build on, mm -hmm. It has to have a foundation, mm -hmm. and I, uh, I believe the beginning of that foundation had been started and moving in the right direction, and this is from the outside looking in. Yes, sir. Now, you come up and take over from the inside looking out, and uh, I'm sure that that had to be encouraging for you to see what, what they had started mm -hmm. and what you can take and run with. Absolutely. You know, every organization talks about a willingness to change. Mm -hmm. And change is easy until it actually happens. And then it gets difficult because then you're dealing with emotion, you're dealing with politics, you're dealing with all of those factors. What I found here was that was not present. Mm -hmm. That there was a sincerity here within the community, within our business structure, our business, orga business organizations and existing partners mm -hmm. to see this program thrive. Um, I, as much as we've got, made some great strides, I take no credit. My job is to create the opportunity and to eliminate barriers. That's how, I, that's how I perceive my role. But I have some amazing instructors, amazing leaders, amazing community partners mm -hmm. that really had that initial vision. I was able to contribute to it and it's just flourishing. So it's exciting because I, I don't think this is where we're near the end. No, I, I think no. quite honestly there's, there's more opportunity that's going to present itself. You know, Lakeland Airport now is going to be fly, flying commercial. Mm -hmm. So I think there's going to have to be other opportunities at, at other areas, other area airports for our students. And, and here, what a great opportunity for our kids to have commercial aviation here uh, and a job potential for them, the internship potential for them. So it's really exciting times. Fred, I can see, what, did you know I was a cleric? <laughs> I, I, I see a, a bronze bust of Fred Hyde <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> so because uh, you come from an aviation family I and do. background. And that, yes, sir. that's something a lot of folks don't, don't realize why, how you get it uh, mm -hmm. so much quicker than some other government officials, I might say. Uh, but you, you see the, where it has come from, yes, and you know where it's going too. I do. Um, I was blessed. You know, my father and both my stepfather and my father were both Air Force. Um, my father, was one of the early engineers that helped design flight simulators. Mm -hmm. So he worked, I'm gonna throw out some names that only those of us of a certain age will remember, <laughs> National, Eastern, Northwest, Air Orient. I mean, there were these are great companies that existed and my father helped design and sustain and maintain their all of their um, simulators. And then he moved into rotables and avionics and those types of things. We had our own repair shop. Um, and it was, it's just amazing business. Mm -hmm. uh, and anyone who isn't fascinated by aviation, all you have to do is get near a landing gear and get a sense of the size and the weight of it. The fact that we could move that through the air is just, the engineering behind it is mm -hmm. just absolutely fascinating. And, and that's what hooked me was mm -hmm. the fact that, you know, in, early on in the industry, I got to play with all the different things um, that came through from the repair shop, you know, and. Uh, so it was exciting, and it really did instill in me a passion for the, for the industry. And so I'm, I am grateful that even though 
my father sold his company, he's retired, he's doing great, that I still get to help you know, repay an industry that supported my family for all those years and, and really a, a passion area of my father's. Well, it's uh, the, uh, the foundation is there. Br you're talking about brick and mortar in uh, Winter Haven. Yes, sir. And only you and probably your staff knows the other areas that have been maybe strategically located. What's our populace? Mm -hmm. Where's our demographics of where's the most students? Sure. And oh, I meant to ask you, last year we talked about you had an idea of uh, sending every fifth grader through the, the facility mm -hmm. to at least expose them to it. How did that go? I think it's gone very well. I think the feedback. Are it still going? It's still ongoing. Okay. Uh, so there's annual field, field trips here in Polk County. Excited to have our students come through here. And I think that's a missed opportunity for many of us is uh, many of our students are told wait till middle school and then wait till high school to get excited about career opportunities. Mm -hmm. And we're trying harder here in Polk County to infuse that at the lower grade levels, not to steer kids towards certain industries or trades or, or, or opportunities, but to really give, make sure that they're well informed. Mm -hmm. Um, we have historically marketed all of our programs to parents and that's a great group to strategize and, and market your information to but as a parent myself when my son comes home and sits at the dinner table and talks at, lo at length uh, in an excited way about something he was exposed to something he's learned something mm -hmm. he's interested in I know that my wife and I are more attentive mm -hmm. and then we get fully behind that and say how do we help support this and nurture that passion that he has. Mm -hmm. And so right now we're trying to do that for our students. We are creating these field trip opportunities, these exposure events for our students so that they're coming home and initiating some of that dialogue at the dinner table so that parents can then get behind them and they don't feel like they have to drive all of that themselves. So, and I think we're gonna see far more, a far better response and interest level mm -hmm. as a result. I have no doubt. I really don't have any doubt. But, And Fred, the uh, the Civil Air Patrol, I was fortunate enough to talk with uh, those folks here day before yesterday, mm -hmm. and they're expanding as well, and they're here on campus. Correct. And uh, I'm still, Melody and I are with Florida Wing. Okay. And I, it, it, somehow all of this is, is going to be coming together, and rather than look at the bleakness of uh, how the economy, and how you, can, you can pick problems out of anything. But we're going to be digging out all of those opportunities, mm -hmm. and everybody can find problems to deal with. But we're looking at the challenge of what are we going to do to take this to the next level. Mm -hmm. And I, I am looking forward to the brick and mortar. And I, I have driven by Winter Haven. I got to admit, <laughs> and, what are those trailers doing out there? And and uh, if you didn't know, you'd say, oh, those uh, somebody misplanned, and they didn't plan big enough for the building, right. so they're having to. But, uh, but, but knowing what they're there for, mm -hmm. I just see the beginning as something nice. I agree, and, and our goal is to make sure that that's a short-lived opportunity, or short-lived reality for those students, because I want them to have the optimal facility to experience the same mm -hmm. things we experience here, you know, to make sure they have that equitable experience, and uh, I, I think we're well on our way, so. Fred, not to, this is kind of a segue. Have you been to Embry-Riddle recently up in Daytona? I have not, not recently. When's the last time you were up there? Goodness, it's probably been 18, 20 years since I've been on that campus. Oh my. Uh, I went to a safety symposium last week up there and uh, let's just leave it at that. <laughs> I mean, how you can take a nonprofit and, and to, to that level mm -hmm. uh, takes a lot of planning, mm -hmm. but it also takes an industry that will, that will encompass that yeah. type of forethought and vision. and. I'm seeing an awful lot of similarities, and this is encouraging, mm -hmm. from a government organization <laughs> uh, which is taking the taxpayers' dollars, and you're, you have a responsibility to those dollars. Correct. And if some of the taxpayers here in Polk County were able to see some of the things that you've had done here with, with the foundation's help, uh, but it would just be so encouraging, says, I don't mind paying my taxes as much as I used to. Right because I see where it's going, I see the impact it's having. Okay. And uh, that's, that's probably gotta be your, your, your driving force. Yeah, one of, our, one of our big goals there is to provide the best possible ROI we can. 
that return on investment. So when your taxpayers look at a school district, you know, they may not have a child, they don't have a touch point to a school district any longer, but they still contribute taxes and support the school district. They want to know mm -hmm. that the quality student that we're turning out each year when we graduate them is at such a high level that those students can enter the workforce or enter into military or enter into the trades and be mm -hmm. successful. Mm -hmm. They want to know that we are helping those young, young adults turn out to be good productive citizens. Mm -hmm. Um, and they want to know that we're offering these opportunities. And I think, you know, again, we're trying to market this more so that the community does, by and large, understand. We, we, we completed an efficiency audit earlier this year. Very excited to, to be able to share that we were found to be a highly effective, highly efficient school district. We have not really borrowed too much money. Um, in fact, most of our borrowing power is still intact, over 90%. Mm -hmm. And so that shows the taxpayers that we're not just spending money to spend money. We try and be innovative and creative. But these programs did not exist when I was a student. This mm. is what excites me, mm. is that we are now able to talk to our students, talk to industry, and figure out where the needs are, and then fulfill that need to the best of our ability. And think about that. When students complete here, and they end up with a certificate, an industry certification, we offer opportunities for dual enrollment and advanced placement where our students can actually earn their associate's degrees. I mean, that's a cost savings to a family. Of course. And really, it's, we're already paying for that through our taxes for the students to be educated. So why not accelerate those opportunities for our kids? And, and that's the exciting part of about what we do each day. Wow. Fred, the, uh, you mentioned a little while back some of the old names in your, in your family business. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't know why Sky King just happened to come up. <laughs> but you remember when Sky King was? Yes, sir. Okay. Where's our Sky King today? <laughs> Uh, we may have a Sky King in the Polk County school system. Correct. Uh, we just haven't found them yet. Or mm -hmm. they haven't been exposed like they should be right. to give these kids an opportunity to say, wow, that's cool. I'd like to do that someday. And they can. Absolutely. Uh, the only thing stopping them is them in most cases. Right. Uh, and, having, and having someone who's willing to engage with those students and paint that pathway for them. And, and I mean no pun intended, but you and I, prior to this interview, I had the opportunity to introduce me to two of our students. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate you talking with them and about manners and respect, but one of them is an, uh, an aspiring artist. Mm -hmm. And I got an opportunity to speak with her further. And, and you and I both were saying, you know, art isn't just limited to the traditional sense. There's a lot of art in aviation if you're, if you're, if you're open to it. Mm -hmm. You know, the artwork that's on the side of a plane, the artwork or the design that goes into the colors and schemes inside the interior of the aircraft. Logos. You know, absolutely, yeah. especially, you know, executive aircraft. There's a lot of work that goes into those and they're great opportunities. Mm -hmm. And, and I, it just takes just a few minutes to talk with a student and find out what inspires them, what their interests are, and then how do we best align that for them so that they don't feel frustrated? And I found that that's, by and large, that's largely been the missing component. Mm -hmm. It's not the fact that we can't talk to them. A lot of our students still don't know all the options we have, which is, again, why we're trying to direct more marketing towards them. And, and I like the way that you mentioned that you're not trying to either shove it down their throat or point them a certain direction, but it's your obligation to let them know what is available out there. Correct. Correct. And uh, that's... Uh, and and uh, you, we have some similarities. <laughs> you can tell when you're talking to somebody uh, like uh, this, the, uh, the the artist. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say artist, the student. You could tell that there was something going on behind oh, the eyeball. Absolutely. And the way that she carried herself. And, absolutely. And that's that's encouraging. Mm -hmm. And and I, when I see that, even out walking around on the campus here, and somebody will ask a question. And if they seem to have the right, you know, receptors, is that a word? Receptor? Sure. Okay. Receptiveness. Uh, if if they if their receptors are going off and uh, and, and I'm picking it up, uh, what else can I do for you? Absolutely, and that's just it. When you talk to about to a student about something that they're truly impassioned or passionate about, um, they light up. Mm -hmm. And uh, far too often we don't take the opportunity to talk to them about that. We talk at them rather than with them. And, and I think the more we can create those opportunities on our campuses and in these environments, the better, more successful our students will be because they feel better connected to the system, to the organization as a whole. Well, Fred, I'm nothing but encouraged. And uh, we're going to wind this one up. Uh, 22 minutes went really quick. It did. 
Uh, but the uh, it, I'm just I'm just really encouraged. Oh, ben, thank you very much for the opportunity. We love being a partner with you all. I love that you're here, and uh, thank you. We, I wasn't going to go there, but I do want to thank you because you do give a, a, a certain amount of support to help us bring these mm -hmm. on to you, and uh, it, it doesn't go unnoticed. Trust me. Well, and that's part of our marketing strategy, right? Yeah. How do we get the message out there? It can't all be we can't rely on ourselves all the time. We have great partners out there, so thank you. You may be seeing something like this going on over at Winhaven someday. That's correct, you I hope know. so. You never I know. I truly hope so. All right, Fred. Thank you. All right, folks, we're going to, uh, we're going to pack this one into the, uh, in the completed box, and that uh, we're going to move on to another one, and we're just going to keep on going. We're going to keep on going until we run out of electricity or people, <laughs> and uh, I don't see that happening anytime soon. <laughs> Take it easy, I'm Ben Coleman, anchor host for Florida Aviation Network. See you next interview. Thank you.